Hello, Scotty here. You have probably seen this type of ants. But did you know that leaf cutter ants don't actually eat the leaves that they collected? What they are doing here is actually something really special, done by only three other types of animals on Earth, including humans. So most of the ants we see are omnivores. They'll eat a lot of different things and sometimes even other ants. However, leaf cutter ants have decided to go for a much more complicated route to solve their food problem, agriculture. Onto this background of generations of farming skill and country law. That's right. About 50 million years ago, a group of ants decided to start farming their own food. But how? It all starts with the iconic leaf collection that we know. Once a suitable plant has been chosen, the ant will vibrate the abdomen as signal to tell their friends that they have found a good plant to collect leaves from. This kind of reminds me of those old school Morse code machine. This way of communication is already quite remarkable, but the speed of which they collect the leaves is truly astounding. They use their powerful mandibles to slice the leaf, one side for cutting, and the other side for pulling the cut forward. They also hold onto the leaves with their front foot and rotate their body in semi-circular motion to create a nice clean cut, similar to a compass. Once the leaves have been collected, they're brought back to the nest. And now this is where the cool part happens. The ants will use the collected leaf to grow a type of fungus for food. Here, a researcher is trying to dig a leaf cutter ant nest out of the ground. Do you see that little white structure with holes on it? This is actually a fungal garden built by the leaf cutter ants. See the queen? Yeah, I see your big old butt. Oh, whoa! Yeah. She's huge! She's huge! Oh my god! And this is why the leaf cutter ants cut leaves to use it as fertilizers to grow a type of fungus called Lapiotaceae. You can see some of that process here with a little bit of leaves sticking out of the fungal ball. The fungus will be used to provide food for all the larvae in the nest and this will be the only thing they ever eat. Each colony of leaf cutter ants will have their own fungal garden that starts with a single queen and the fungal garden starts at a size smaller than a golf ball that can be grown for over decades as long as the colony survives. Oh, by the way, this is what Lapiotaceae fungus look like in the wild. So, they're just pretty much mushroom farmers that eat mushroom every day. That was really cool, but what if I tell you that farming fungus and collecting leaves isn't actually the coolest part about these ants. Just recently, a group of scientists discovered that there are some crystal minerals on some of the leaf cutter ants' exoskeleton. This is really cool because these kind of biominerals exoskeleton are usually found on the shell of crabs or lobsters, not land-based insects like ants. To demonstrate the effect of this crystal armor, scientists pitted two types of leafcutter ants against each other. In the first scenario, neither of the ants had that crystal armor we talked about. And as expected, the bigger ant wins. That incredible strength just comes from the fact that its almost entire head is made of muscle. So that strength is also used for leaf cutting as well as you see here defending the nest and fighting against invaders. In the second scenario, the scientists picked another smaller ant, but this time with that crystal armor exoskeleton. And now the outcome of the fight is reversed. The researcher who made this discovery had to ask a geologist to help him confirm what he saw under the microscope was actually biominerals on the exoskeleton. 
And when the result was finally confirmed, he exclaimed that he found rock ants, which to me just sounds like a name for a Pokemon. And I guess he kind of found a new type of Pokemon, a rock type ants. Leafcutter ants is actually one of the most well-studied ants in the world, in the scientific community. Yet we're still discovering new things about them, which really makes you wonder what we can discover by studying all the other insects that has yet to be carefully researched. Alright, thank you for watching, stay wild, and stay curious, I'll see you next time.